Last chance, George. I'm sorry, Jess. I'm just not interested. This is what we've been waiting for, George. This is your chance. You have greatness in you. I see it. Your father sees it. Tom Cantrell sees it. You're the only one who doesn't. I don't know what's right anymore. That's what you have me for, darling. Do you remember Hope Tyler's husband? The poor man who got killed. Yes, of course. I was with him when he died. He said something to me. Something I can't get out of my head. He told me that... You've got to stop dwelling on the past, George. It's time to put the war behind you. Think about us. Think about our future. Oh, run with Camp Trail, darling. This is only the beginning. All we have to do is take that first leap. We're ready for this. We deserve this. Decirte que eres tú, mi amor, mi obsesión, mi emoción. Te quiero alejar con todo mi amor. Look at Juan. Like a big kid, huh? Well, uh, that's one big kid I'll take on my side every time. It's the best dynamite man I've ever seen. It's the only dynamite man you've ever seen. Who dialed your number? <laughs> Andy, let's do that uh, bunker routine again. Achtung du Luftwaffe! The Americans were dropping bombs left and right. But the Führer says damage is very slight. However, However as, as a, a result, result of this mission, mission one of our cities is missing. <laughs> hey, George, you remember the night your sleeping bag caught on fire? I thought my feet were finally getting warm. Nobody told me I was getting on fire. It's a beautiful wedding, isn't it? Yes, it is. Sometimes it's a good idea to get away from the men. They like to talk amongst themselves, you know. As long as they stay out of trouble. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't worry about that. They talk big, but they're essentially harmless. Like a school of fish or a flock of birds. <laughs> Miss Mead, can I ask you a question, personally? Miss Barbara, certainly. Does George act funny since he's been back? I'm sorry, I don't mean funny, not like that. I'm, what I mean is, do you think he... Uh, is there anything different about him? Uh, for instance, Jesse, well, he doesn't know how to talk to me anymore, and, and I, I don't know if... My husband is perfectly fine. Excuse me. So we're going to register for the election next week. Can't believe how much paperwork there is. I envy you, Jesse. You're a man who knows what he wants. How about you, George? What do you want? I wish I knew. Well, you missed your chance to 
run with us. We got a new candidate for mayor. Who? Me. I'm trying real hard, Hope. I swear I am. Oh, but I don't know if I'm doing right or not. With Jesse? He gets these spells. Can't remember how to do certain things. And sometimes his voice gets stuck. He just goes wild. Scares a boy half to death. Me too. Does he try to hurt you? No, no. Mostly he just hurts himself. Jesse's gonna get better. It's just a matter of time. He wants me to quit working. What do you think? Nope. I love running that factory. And I got a real knack for it, too. We're making more money now than we did when Jesse ran it. Have you tried talking to him about it, telling him how you feel? It's not as easy as it used to be. He doesn't really want to talk anymore. He didn't even talk to me about running for mayor. He just decided to do it. I think it's a crazy idea. Have you thought about encouraging him? He's doing something he believes in. Encourage him? But hope he's got no chance, let's face it. Now, the whole thing is just plain foolish. Not to him. Well, I better get on back. Thanks for the time, Hope. I wish I had the answers for you, Becky. It's just nice to have someone listen. Becky, you're taking care of a lot of things right now. Don't forget to take care of yourself. If you ever want somebody to talk to, day or night, you know where I am. You take such good care of everybody, Hope. Who takes care of you? Hello, sir. Yeah, what can I do for you, son? My name is Juan Medina. I came about the job, office clerk. I see. Well, have a seat there, Mr. Medina. Thank you. Oh, um, these are my discharge papers. Honorable discharge. Mm -hmm. They really give you the bronze star, son? Yes, sir. It's right here. So they did. Well, uh, would you say your qualifications are, Mr. Uh, Medina? I'm a very hard worker. I mean, do you know anything about the insurance business? I learned fast. I learned very fast in the service. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of special training. What kind of special training? Munitions, explosives. <clears throat> we uh, don't have occasion to blow up too much around here, son. But if we ever do, we'll. We don't know who to call. The ad says no experience. I'm sorry, son. I, I, I just don't think it's going to work out. Look, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you really need a job, son, uh, always use somebody to sweep up around here. If you want to, come on back. Uh, just foreclosing. I'd like to help him out, but what could he do here? Well, I was thinking uh, maybe file clerk. Tom Cantrell's nephew is our file clerk. You mean the kid that uh, sits around all day? You're a good lawyer, George. But since when did you get so friendly with the Mexicans? Dad, I trust my life with this man. We'd be lucky to have him. Don't be naive, George. He doesn't have the right qualifications. You understand what I'm saying? Loud and clear. Your heart's in the right place, son. Bring me the Malins in the file when you get a chance, would you? I'm sorry, Johnny. It... It's okay. 
I understand, George. Well, it's, you know, there's just no openings. It's a small company. And... It's okay. Thanks for trying. You know, now, now, if things are tight, I can spot you some dough. That's no oh, problem. Oh, no. No, no, no. Nothing like that. I'm, I'm fine. No, oh, thank you. And just keep it in mind. You know, you don't have to worry about me. You ever miss the war, George? The truth? A little bit, yeah. Me too. Late for what? No. Don't tease me, darling. The Carlson's dinner party. It's been on the calendar for weeks. I don't feel well. well you'll feel better after a nice dinner. I'm not in the mood for a party. You haven't been in the mood for anything. It's time for you to snap out of it. The war's over. Oh, snap out of it? How easy? Why didn't I think of that? Don't be sarcastic, George. It doesn't suit you. Look, I don't want to sit at another dinner party where the only thing everyone wants to hear are old war stories that I'm trying to forget. You're not sounding much like a candidate, George. Well, I'm not yet, am I? Ronnie Bishop called today from the Ovington Observer. Wanted to know if there was any truth to the rumor you're running for trustee with Tom Cantrell. Must be a slow news day. Of course, I told him you were. You did what? It doesn't hurt to get a little press, George. Let Cantrell know people are interested in you. Barbara, I haven't told anyone I'm running. I haven't told anyone I'm even strolling yet. Now, my advice to you is that you call Ronnie What's-His-Name back and you tell him that you're mistaken. George, you know you're going to run. You're gonna run because it's the right thing to do. You better shave, darling. All's okay. That'll be 235, sir. Thank you. The neighbors. Hello, Mr. Jones. Yes, I do have the most beautiful house on the block. Thank you. Oh, my car. <laughs> oh, it's just something I used to get around in. <laughs> a car like this, it's just wasted on rich people. You know why? No, why? Because everything they have is just good, so they don't even notice anymore. Me? I haven't even got a chair as comfortable as these seats. Hmm. I'd always notice. Someday we'll have a car like this, you know? A car you can't hear coming from five blocks away. I know. Hmm. I'll be right back. Star to, right? That's right. So I'm getting my uh, my gas pump by uh, Genuine Hero. I like that. Where's Andy? Oh, he had to leave early. Is that you in charge? Uh huh. It's it's gonna be eighty-five cents for the gas. You didn't need much. Oh, son, relax. You're working too hard. <laughs> you know what the problem is? With a lot of your people from down Mexico way. They think the world owes them a living. That's why I like to see a hard-working Mexican like you. You talk good, too. You know, all these Mexican kids, they don't talk good English. Maybe someday I'll give you lessons. <laughs> OK, son, where is it? What do you mean, where's what? 
Tom Vlett with my name on it. Where's your boss leave? I don't know what you're talking about. And you'll be back in the morning. You know, I really do need that 85 cents for gas. You got it all wrong, son. I don't pay you. You pay me. Now, where's my envelope? I haven't seen any envelope. Maybe, uh, just maybe. Put it in your own pocket. Look, I told you, I really don't know what you're talking about. Cough it up, boy. Maybe I'll give you a lesson in front of your mama seat in there. Is that what you want? I don't have your money. Locks turn his back on the whole town. People like George stick with their own kind. But it doesn't change anything. Still gonna run, kick their butts. Come on, Jesse. Who's gonna vote for us with George running against us? I don't wanna hear that kind of talk, Andy. Now we got our flyers printed up, we're gonna hit the streets tomorrow. Jess, I gotta lock this place up. Anybody finds out I let y'all in here, I'm gonna. Count me in, amigos. Well, you gotta give the poor fella credit. He's got the courage of his convictions. Veterans Party. Bipartisan. Man has some imagination, don't you think, George? But what do you suppose he's after? I mean, what do you think he really wants out of all this? I think he wants to do the right thing. <laughs> now, I really feel sorry for him. <laughs> Cigar, George. No, thank you. Well, is there anything else we need to go over? No, it's all clear. Ah, uh, cheer up, son. There's nothing to it. We'll make a couple of speeches, show up at one or two fundraising dinners for our beloved governor, and play 18 holes on election day. It's that easy. It's a blessing. People know what's right. They'll also know what's wrong. Afraid I don't follow you there, George. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Sheriff? No idea. He paid a visit to Juan Medina yesterday. Ended up beating him half to death. A little misunderstanding over a payoff, I'm told. What's this all about, Sheriff? Beats me, I never touched him. George. George, I think this election is getting you all jittery. Now, why don't you just relax for a few days? I've got everything under control. You, know, you, you treat this county like it's your own little dictatorship, Tom. How long do you think people are going to stand for that? I wouldn't be so quick to judge, son. Remember, we're all in this together. Besides, everybody's a little tainted, one way or another. politician. <laughs> what do you want me to do about Meadows? Do? Why? What is there to do? Let the boy run? Hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give the young man the chance to go head to head with me. Public debate. Well, that's going to make it look like you take him serious. Huh? No. It's going to make it look like I have nothing to fear. Besides, as I understand it, this boy left half his brain on some battlefield. Well, get him up in front of the people of this town and let him see exactly what kind of man wants to be their mayor.
set it down. Thank you. <clears throat> you think this is all a big joke, don't you? I never said that. You don't have to. It's all over your face. Every time you look at me. I'm just afraid you're taking on too much too soon. Oh, you're worried I'm gonna make a fool out of myself. Don't start this again, Jesse. Now, if you feel this is what you have to do, then do it. Well, maybe it would be a little easier if I thought you were behind me. I am behind you. I don't understand what you want from me. Yes, you do. I'm gonna ask you again for the last time. Quit the factory and work with me on this. I need you. I'd get half a dozen men to run that factory for me just as good as you. Oh, is that right? Well, then why don't you just get that half a dozen men to help you run this election? Because I need my wife. Well, how do you think it looks when you're never around? People don't think you take it serious. This has nothing to do with the election, Jesse. You just don't like me running that factory by myself. You want me back here in the house waiting on you hand and foot. That's a lie. Is it? Well, then how come you didn't need me when you cooked up your veterans party? You didn't even bother talking to me about it. You, you made me feel like I wasn't even part of things anymore. And that hurt, Jesse. That hurt? Well, how do you think it feels to come home, see your wife doing your job for you? That you don't fit in no more? That was all in your mind. I never tried to make you feel that way. I wanted you to come back to the factory. I didn't tell you to go run for mayor. Oh, is that right? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll drop out of the race right now, and I'll take the factory over again, and you can stay home with Sam. How would that be? I'll call one right now. Jesse. You don't want that, do you? You don't want me back there. It's not like that. It's just that I've been running it for a long time and I've done good with it, real good. I never even dreamed I could run a business. It feels good to use my brain. Maybe it makes me like myself more, but it doesn't mean I love you less. You can't ask me to go back to the way things were, Jesse. Well, you better figure out what's more important to you. Your job or your husband. How come I'm the one that has to decide? Maybe you better figure out what's more important to you, the election or your wife. I'll be the one to give out jobs, take kids on county work. And I'll make a very good salary. You can move out of this place, maybe get a house in town. What do you think, huh? What about your job? I quit. This campaign is my job now. be happy. For once, we get a chance to take things into our own hands. To make the rules ourselves. What are you thinking? About my sister. The one in California. Her husband works on a farm. They are safe there. There are a lot of jobs. There's nothing to be afraid of. She has a lemon tree right outside her window. I'm not going to run away. We have to fight to change things. I'm afraid. Of what? 
what I will do to you. I say it's time for people to stop having to live in fear of our sheriff and his deputies. Uh, it's, it's time for people to stop having to pay bribes just to keep the businesses open. I say it's time for a change. That time is now. Ladies and gentlemen, I have patiently listened while this young man has made his wild accusations. Last chance, George. I'm sorry, Jess. I'm just not interested. This is what we've been waiting for, George. This is your chance. You have greatness in you. I see it. Your father sees it. Tom Cantrell sees it. You're the only one who doesn't. I don't know what's right anymore. That's what you have me for, darling. Do you remember Hope Tyler's husband? The poor man who got killed. Yes, of course. It is Say nothing, my amor Como un sueño azul Y a mi vida llegó Oye mi cantar, mi corazón Mi amor decirte que eres tú mi amor mi obsesión mi emoción te quiero alejar con todo mi amor I was with him when he died he said something to me Something I can't get out of my head. He told me that. You've got to stop dwelling on the past, George. It's time to put the war behind you. Think about us. Think about our future. Oh, run with Cantrell, darling. This is only the beginning. All we have to do is take that first leap. We're ready for this. We deserve this. It's a beautiful wedding, isn't it? Yes, it is. Sometimes it's a good idea to get away from the men. They like to talk amongst themselves, you know. As long as they stay out of trouble. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. They talk big, but they're essentially harmless, like a school of fish or a flock of birds. <laughs> Miss Mead, can I ask you a question, personally? Miss Barbara, certainly. Does George act funny since he's been back? I'm sorry, I don't mean funny, not like that. Um, what I mean is, do you think he... <laughs> Look at Juan. Like a big kid, huh? Well, that's one big kid I'll take on my side every time. It's the best dynamite man I've ever seen. It's the only dynamite man you've ever seen. Who dialed your number? Andy. Let's do that uh, bunker routine again. Achtung, du Luftwaffe! The Americans were dropping bombs left and right. But the Führer says damage is very slight. However, However as, as a, a result, result of this mission, mission one, one of, of our cities is missing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, George. You remember the night your sleeping bag caught on fire? I thought my feet were finally getting warm. <laughs> Nobody told me I was just getting fire. <laughs> 